Hello my beautiful friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new and you've never visited my channel before, welcome, my name is Darian. And in today's video, I just had the most brilliant idea ever. And I didn't just wanna dedicate it strictly to nursing students who are in the program already, but I also was like, okay, I was a pre-nursing student at one point in my life as well, and I thought it was only fair to do a video for all of my pre-nursing students out there and, you know, just incorporate you guys in my little nursing spiel of videos lately and do a video based on how did I pass AMP, so anatomy and physiology, both 201 and 202 with an A. I know right now you guys are sitting down in that lecture classroom, in that lab classroom, pulling out your hair because it is a difficult course but I am hoping that this video will help shine some light on your situation and kind of just clarify a little bit of things and you know just help you out in some way so if you are not yet subscribed to this YouTube channel please subscribe down below go ahead and like this video of course but without further ado if you are ready to get an A plus in a and please keep on watching. All right guys, so before we get started, I do just want to say that your Bio 201 and Bio 202 lecture versus your lab class are very, very different. Your lecture class is a three credit course. With lab, it is a one credit course, at least for the college that I went to. I went to NAU, and with this class, it, I found it a lot more difficult than the actual lecture itself. I don't know why. I am typically really, really good with hands-on learning, However, I found the lab to be very, very hard and I don't know why it was a one credit course. I always just like questioned why is this a one credit course if I am studying so much more for lab than I am for a lecture. But I just wanted to kind of incorporate everything into one video. I didn't want to make a separate like lecture video and then a separate lab video because you know, I wanted all the information just to be on one video in itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off with how I prepared for lecture. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. This is my Bio 201 binder from a long time ago, spring of 2018. I took Bio 201. So I was going to show you guys my Bio 202 notebook, but they really just coincided both my both binders from 201 and 202. So I just want to show you guys for a lecture what I would do. And this kind of goes hand in hand with even what I do now. I always print off the actual PowerPoint before class started. So what I would do, the first thing that I do is I print all of these off and I just did them like in a grid like format, right? And before class, I would make it a point to read through this PowerPoint here. I didn't look up any information. I just read through it very, very briefly just to kind of get an idea of what we're going to be talking about before class actually started. And then as I'm sitting in class, I would I'd get whatever PowerPoint we're going over and I would just follow along with the professor and what she would be saying. So I would just write off little notes to the side, what my professor said in class that day. So I just did that kind of throughout every single different PowerPoint that she had I would read the PowerPoint before class started take notes on the side as she was talking after my lecture class I would get the PowerPoint from class and I would rewrite it on a blank printer paper the reason that I did this is because scientifically proven somewhere that if you write down all of your information you're just more likely to actually memorize and understand the information versus you just trying to you know just read the information from the PowerPoint in itself it helped me as I was able to prepare for every single exam that I took in that class and then another thing that she would do is she would post little questions I would also look up questions like on the internet I don't remember the sites that I specifically specifically use but do that you know look up different questions practice questions because at that point you're actually able to apply the information to your learning experience all right so another thing that I also took in class with me was just a blank notebook paper and the reason that I did this is because a lot of the times my professor would be writing down like pictures on the board as she was going through her PowerPoint and I just liked doing this as a way to have a wider and longer layout than actually trying to squeeze all all that information she'd write on the board into the PowerPoints alone. So as you guys can see here, I am just 
you know, writing down all of the images that she posted and that she would draw in class. So another tip that I do just want to add for a lecture and what I did, at least it worked for the school that I went to. If you go on to ratemyprofessor.com, you type in your professor's names. A lot of students that have taken that professor before has left either like a review, a comment on them. So I always use that site before the semester started so I knew what I was getting myself into, what my professor was going to be like, how their teaching style was going to be. And I just found it really helpful as a way to prepare for that class. And if it wasn't too late and I got stuck with an awful professor, I would make that switch really, really quick. Okay, guys. So another thing that I also did, my college used to offer tutor sessions. I made it a point to schedule one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions for lecture. I believe it was just one time a week or two times a week just depending on if I had like an exam coming up or something like that but it was free of charge and I found those lessons very very useful so if your college offers that if you don't know if your college offers that ask because I promise you that will make all of the difference in the way that you study um, you are getting tutored by a student who previously already taken their class who exceeded in their class and who is now just doing tutoring as a little side job as a part of being a student at that campus so I would definitely take advantage of those free tutoring sessions another thing that also helped me in my lecture and it actually just helped me all across the board with my prerequisites as well as still being in nursing school is go to your professor's office hours get to know your professors I feel like when you build a relationship with your professor in the beginning of the semester you know they know how hardworking you are they know how driven you are and they also know just how much you want to understand the material because you know you're making it a point to see them in their office hours on your own timing and I just think that showing up and meeting with your professors just really speaks volume so I do feel like introducing yourself getting to know your professors on a one-on-one -on -one basis is very very important in your success as an overall college student and that's pretty much all that I did for lecture on top of watching I remember that crash course I will post his YouTube channel down in the description but his YouTube videos truly saved me an a and because he just goes into the nitty-gritty of everything he makes the pictures and videos very fun and appealing so I do recommend using crash course when you are studying for your a and class as well However, I know we're all wanting just to get to actual lab because in lab I'm telling you I'm not the only one who feels like this but it is a lot more difficult than lecture in itself so I just want to show you guys first and foremost we were required to use this book inside of lab obviously additions change over the years you know everything just kind of switches up and stuff like that I just wanted to show you guys the book that I'm going to be referencing in this video this is it again this is back in 2018 so girl I'm pretty sure you guys got new additions already before I jump into what I would do to study for a lab I did just want to show you guys the book that actually helped me a lot we all know that lab is all about memorization and I have never taken any course that required more memorization than your AMP. This book was actually not required. This is what it looks like. It is called A Brief Atlas of the Human Body and this is the second edition. I'm going to be posting the description down below so please check that out and I cannot emphasize this book to you enough. So I do just want to run through it really quickly and show you guys what it looks like but it is absolutely like gorgeous so this is what it looks like it gives you literally every single tissue that you guys can find but look at how organized that looks I hope you guys can see it it is just gorgeous it gives you all of your white blood cells all of your muscle tissue cardiac tissue I really liked it a lot it'll give you a part two so as you guys can see right there then it says bones of the human skeleton so in this book it just gives you every single image that you could ever want and need and a little theme so yeah, as you guys can see, it is just awesome. It gives you real life cadavers and I just highly recommend this book. All right guys, so another thing that I would do and how I would actually study from this book in itself is say for instance, we were going over the fetal skull, okay? We're going over the little baby's skull here. I would get a sticky note, okay? And I would actually like tear it off and cover all of these little points on it that you guys see me pointing to. 
and there I would just you know cover them up and I would do it for all the sections that I was actually going to be reviewing and then right on top of the sticky note I would actually write down what it's pointing to I found that super helpful in me being able to distinguish the difference between certain surfaces of the human skull of you know certain indentations of the bones certain parts of different tissues and all that stuff so I do find covering all of these little things with a nice little sticky note and then writing over them is a good study tool to utilize while you are studying from this book alone all right guys so I did just want to show you guys what my little folder looked like for lab class it is a bit crazy but I did just want to let you guys know that a big thing to use in anatomy and physiology because it is strictly heavy weighted on memorization is to make flashcards i cannot tell you how much flashcards helped me in my a and p classes because again it is memorization if you write down your flashcards quiz yourself quiz a partner have you and your partner go back and forth with those flashcards it will help and make the information stay so much more than actually just reading a paper so this is what that notebook will look like i do just want to show you guys that i still have all of my note cards from anatomy and physiology because for one i put a lot of time and effort into these cards and then for two i like to go back to them and use them as a resource so i just wanted to show you guys what my note cards look like i just have this little like bright note card on the front just telling me what lab is this coming from and what's the topic that we're discussing. So in these flashcards, it's the integumentary system lab seven. And again, I got that lab seven from this book right here. It says lab seven, which is this tab right there. This is what all of those note cards look like in my little tissue lab six note card section. Okay. So I put name of the tissue, the location and its function. Okay. So I always print in color since I was in my prerequisites because I find color just helps me stay more organized, more consistent, and in a way it just keeps me a little bit motivated as I'm studying. And then it also just shows a lot of detail. So I really highly recommend printing in colored ink. Right here it says name the tissue, the location, and its function. So I put this down right here because here it's just like given to you. It's a simple little cartoon tissue and I didn't want to cheat myself out so I got a little, little sticky note and I just stuck it there. So now I'm obligated to you know, not know the cartoon version, but know the actual microscopic version, I guess you can say. So then on the back, I wrote, you know, this is my simple columnar epithelium. The location, it says all the non-ciliated is in your digestive tract, stomach, anal canal, and then the ciliated is actually going to be found in the respiratory system and all that stuff. And I just kind of go down my note cards there, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys that because I know some of you guys were just asking, how do I do my note cards? So the same thing here, name the tissue, the location, and its function, just like that. And then in the back, transitional epithelium, I put where it's found and all that stuff, fun stuff. So I try to be as detailed as I can with every single one of my flashcards because, again, you know, like, AMP, they're going to be asking the nitty gritty on those exams. I don't want you guys to get scared, but I do highly suggest you being detailed and putting in as much time as you guys can in all of your guys' flashcards because I'm telling you guys, this truly helped me pass with flying colors on all my exams. I did also just want to recommend and tell you guys that having a partner to study with truly made my life so much more easier for a and p we would literally be in the library till like two in the morning three in the morning studying quizzing each other going on whiteboards you know like writing out the information playing the teach back method and i'm telling you guys if you find a really good motivated study partner who is you know just as focused and driven as you are to get an a in this class you guys will definitely succeed together all right guys so that is actually all that i have for you in today's video i really hope you all enjoyed it everything that i mentioned you know i did do for both classes like the flashcards, the study partner the study sessions i did for literally both classes but because that is all that i have for you guys in today's video have a beautiful blessed rest of your day don't forget to be kind to one another and show lots of love until next time my friends bye guys